Good morning, this is the Plug Seeker. Welcome to another video. So this morning I've woken up and the car is completely covered with snow and it's about uh, one or two degrees outside. So I thought I'd quickly take an opportunity today to do a video to show uh, how much the battery is affected by having the heating on full power and uh, we'll see how much that would have theoretically affected the range if I leave it on for half an hour. Just before we start, I have a quick favor to ask. Please consider subscribing to my channel and to clicking on the notification bell to get new episodes as soon as I upload them. Many thanks for your support. So in today's episode, I'm going to be looking at um, how much it affects the car's battery and range um, when you have it on full heating and uh, the lights on and everything. So I'll uh, put the heating on full power, uh, I'll put the rear window uh, heating on, the steering wheel heating on, I'll leave the lights on, and I'll have all the four um, seats on as well. So we'll see how much of a drain that is on the battery in half an hour. So this is like uh, similar to the video I did previously, where I looked at how the air con uh, was gonna affect the range. So the settings I've got on here, it's at maximum power heating, 30 degrees. The AC is on as well to keep the window demist. Both of the heated seats are on. The rear window heating is on. Front uh, window defrost and heating is on. Um, on this side, I will put the heated steering wheel on. And you can see with all these systems turned on, the climate control was using approximately 4.3 kilowatts. And the baseline other functions of the car were using about 0.6 kilowatts. So give or take, the car is using about 5 kilowatts of power. Using the Leaf Spy app, we can see that the battery is starting at 37.7 kilowatt hours, which is 65.3%, which shows as 63% on the car's dashboard. It also confirms that with all of the heating on full power, it is indeed using about 5.2 kilowatts of power. So I am cold in here, so I'm not going to stay in the car. Um, I will uh, come back after half an hour and we'll see how it's got on and how much warmer it is. And I'll check with Leaf Spy to see what the battery is like now and again at the end. And we'll see how we go. So the heater has been going at full power and after half an hour, it is lovely and hot and toasty in here. So uh, yeah, that's perfect. Now, actually it probably didn't need that much. Um, I think it was already quite warm after about uh, five or 10 minutes. So normally I would just have warmed it up remotely. But uh, as I said today, I wanted the lights on, everything else on so we can get an idea of uh, the power drain of all those systems at the same time. So let's uh, skip now to the statistics and see how we did. So just to recap, these were the initial settings for this test. As you can see, all of the internal heating systems were set to full power, along with the normal nighttime headlights. Over the course of 32 minutes, the battery went from 63% to 58% on the dashboard. This was confirmed on LeafSpy to have been a drop of 3.0 kilowatt hours. If we extrapolated this to one hour, 
full use of all the heating systems would use approximately 5.625 kilowatt hours. This would equate to approximately 10% loss of battery and therefore range. And so using that figure of 10%, I've estimated here how much range I might lose both at 30 and 70 miles per hour. However, this test only really gives a very rough estimate. There are many other factors which will affect the range of an EV in the cold, not least of which is the efficiency of the battery at lower temperatures. However, there is an excellent online resource called the EV Database, where you can check the range of your EV in different driving conditions. They have done a worst case range prediction using the temperature of minus 10 with the heating on going at 70 miles per hour. So let's see what they predict for my Nissan LEAF. For normal everyday city driving, I usually estimate my Nissan LEAF's range to be about 210 miles. Interestingly, the EV database suggests that my Nissan LEAF could have a real world range of up to 315 miles in mild weather, which it defines as 23 degrees. Now it's possible I tend to work on a extremely conservative underestimate of my range um, to be safe. And we probably don't get enough days that are 23 degrees or better in the UK. However, using this figure, they suggest that at minus 10 degrees with the heating on, you would see the range drop from 315 down to about 210, which is a quite significant 33% drop. Now this partly is probably due to the fact it was naught degrees and not minus 10 degrees, but it does show that there are probably other factors at play other than just the power use from the heating. The database gives an estimate for mild weather motorway range of 195 miles, which is not that far from my rough conservative estimate of 170 miles, which I tend to use. At minus 10 degrees with the heating on, they suggest that this range would drop to 150 miles, which is about a 23% drop. These worst case scenario estimates of range are really useful and I would highly recommend anyone who owns an EV to check out their car on the EV database. One thing I think that the EV database shows is that there is a bigger drop in the range in my Nissan Leaf than can be accounted for in just the power use of the heater. And a lot of this is probably down to the battery temperature. Now, in all EVs, the battery temperature works in an optimal range, somewhere around 21 or so degrees. And if the battery is colder, then it will be less efficient and you'll get less range. Now, many modern EVs, especially the Teslas, overcome this by not only heating the cabin when you're prepping the car, but also heating the battery itself to bring it up to optimum before you start. Unfortunately, and this is a failing of the Nissan Leaf, it doesn't have active battery heating. Now in this test, I use an extreme example, setting the heater to 26 degrees. But let's face it, in reality, once you've warmed the car up a bit, you don't need to be sitting in a Turkish bar for the whole journey. It's more than adequate once it's warmed up a bit to have the temperature maybe around, I don't know, 18 to 22 degrees. So in reality, I wouldn't have had it going quite as hot as that. And in fact, if I'm wearing sensible clothes in a cold uh, journey, to be honest, once it's been warmed up, I can often uh, cope with just the heated seats on their own and be perfectly comfortable. Another factor I also considered was the fact that during this test, there was nobody in the car. Whereas in reality, if there were people in the car, their own body heat and breathing would actually be warming up the car a little bit as well. So maybe that's a confabulating factor to consider. In today's test, I had an outside temperature of zero degrees. And I'm sure there'll be a lot of people in other climates wanting to point out that they have far colder winters, well into the minus numbers. Now, obviously the EV database gives you an idea of your car at minus 10. So again, that's always worth checking out. And also I would check out the videos of Bjorn Nyland, who is in Norway and has tested many EVs in the very cold climate of Norway and he has an excellent YouTube channel, which is well worth taking a look. And one final consideration is that usually when I am preheating the EV, 
I would usually have it still plugged in. So some of the energy used to initially warm up the cabin would be getting replenished by the charger. So I hope you enjoyed this little video. Obviously this was only a very rough test and I'm sure there are many other limitations that you can all point out to me. So please do give me your feedback in the comments and let me know your experience of charging and driving your EV in the cold. What sort of range do you find you're getting and does your EV have a battery heating system? So let me know in the comments below. Now before I finish, I decided there was no way I could do a video on EVs and cold climates without talking about two of my friends, Chris and Julie. Chris Ramsey and his wife Julie are probably the world's most famous EV adventurers and outstanding ambassadors for the EV community. They are currently in the middle of an amazing challenge to really test the limits of EVs. They are driving a Nissan Aria all the way from the North Pole to the South Pole. At the time of this video, I believe they've made their way from Magnetic North and now progressing through the freezing climate of Northern Calendar. So please do check out these links and follow their amazing journey. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And if you can click on the notification bell, you'll get new episodes as soon as I release them. Also, you can do me a big favor by liking this video and by sharing it on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, or whatever social media you use. It really does help out my channel and I really do appreciate it. So thank you very much everyone for your support. Anyway, that's it for me today. This is the Plug Seeker signing out. Happy charging everyone.